I just want to talk a little bit about, about Juneteenth and, and what it means to me. Last year, uh, we celebrated Juneteenth in this chamber, and uh, it meant something. And this year, I think people now recognize across the country that Juneteenth is something that we should remember and recognize. And I'd like to put that in context of Michigan. So General Granger, who you've just heard a little bit about, started his career as a military officer in Detroit. He commanded Union volunteers from Michigan in the 2nd Cavalry. He made his chops leading Michigan soldiers, leading people who came from this state who we represent. And uh, when we come into the Capitol in the rotunda, you see American flags. Often we say Union flags, but those are American flags that you see downstairs. And until 1908, the flag of the 2nd Cavalry, the one that General Granger led into combat, stood there. But uh, it, it came up missing after a reunion in 1908. As we talk about history and times and how all these things have changed, it's important to put in context the sacrifices and the lessons that we've learned. And through this discussion, so many people say, well, we can't erase history. And I don't ever want to see history erased because there's so many lessons that people learned. And the biggest is that though something may be on the books until it's enforced, until good people stand up and say it is a reality, it doesn't matter because there were black people enslaved all across this country that were not set free when a Republican president said they were free until people who otherwise were not involved stepped up to be involved. And those were Michiganders. And Michigan has an opportunity again to lead as we move forward in how we respond. The reason that we honor history and that we remember is so we don't make the same mistakes, so we don't forget the lessons that we've learned. And the lessons we learned were so expensive. The lives lost were so many. And Juneteenth says that it took two and a half years for people to be told they were free. But as a black man, as someone who has lived in America this, my entire life and whose family came here not willingly, it's amazing that, we're, that I survived, that we stand here and are able to talk about these issues that we cannot do alone. And right after that, right after Reconstruction, you saw black folks take great strides. And then you saw them be pushed back because of Jim Crow laws and, and a host of other issues. Today, it's easy to feel and to say that things are ready for change because people are saying that black lives matter, that people recognize that systemic racism is a problem. And I just need your help. And I appreciate my colleague uh, who I share military service with speaking up and talking about this because this is not a Democratic issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is not a white or black issue. This is an issue that needs to be addressed as people because we are the ones that need to solve this. This is something that has to absolutely get done and I'm looking forward to getting it done. I'm looking forward to it. And when you think about Juneteenth, think about the 4th of July, think about independence, think about that idea of freedom because Black people weren't free on July 4th. Black people weren't free on Juneteenth. And in many ways, there are still so many people in this country that are looking for that freedom, that ability to be included in government, to be protected by government, and for the institutions that we create not to kill us, not to oppress us, not to enslave us. And the reason I say enslave is because the only place that you can still be enslaved is in prison. And as we talk about the criminal justice reforms that are moving through this chamber, as we talk about all of those things, it's important to remember that there are still a host of people who do not know they are free because the reality on the ground is that they don't have the opportunity to be free. And I know that each and every member of this chamber wants to change that, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I appreciate the opportunity to work with you to make sure that every single person in this state and this nation are truly free. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd ask that my remarks be printed in the journal.